the front page Saturday Town Hall edition, 8 to 10 Saturday mornings right here. Brought to you by Council President Emeritus Herb Wesson Jr., the Independent Professionals Association at IndieWork.org, the City of Los Angeles, and Community Build. And we thank you so much for helping us make this happen. Our topic today, black money, black jobs, can black business survive COVID-19. And um, joining us now, we have Jamal Watkins. He's the Vice President of Civic Engagement at the NAACP, leading the association's efforts to maximize African-American community participation and representation in our democracy. Jamal Watkins, welcome to the front page. Good morning, and thank you for having me and having us. I'm, you know, I'm sure this conversation has to be going on all across the nation. You know, can black workers, black businesses survive? And I really worry about, uh, I'm sure this is true elsewhere, but here in L.A., you've got people who are, you know, hairstylists and, and, and you know, uh, photographers and actors and, and people that work multiple jobs, um, people that have multiple hustles, um, gig workers that, you know, are just not getting the kind of support um, that we would hope they would. And I wonder where we go from here after we, you know, get to the other side of this. Well, what you just lifted up, Dominique, is when we think about the NAACP and our 2.4 million members and supporters all across the country, we also are embedded in black communities like in Los Angeles, where you're exactly right. I'm from California, and I've lived in Los Angeles and know that a lot of the small businesses you're talking about are, are considered sole proprietors. That means that they don't have a whole lot of employees. They may have one or two, some family members, some contractors, some consultants, and a network. And so we think about the money that has come through Congress, the billions of dollars, not once, but twice. Our community, the folks that you just described, are cut out and left out. And we end up sort of being stuck in the category of getting one of two things, and that's unemployment, and that's economic impact payments, which is basically the stimulus check. That's not the business money, the billions of dollars that have been allocated. And when we see companies like Shake Shack, for example, who got $9 million, that's not a small business. And so what we're learning in this reality, and, and we know this is that we have always been in a crisis or in a pandemic, but now economically, you know, it's showing even more deeply that it's set up so that two-thirds of folks who are getting those resources actually aren't the small businesses that represent and reflect our community and the people who are in our community. Right. So I want to bring um, some workers' voices into the conversation here. Uh, DJ PZB is a female entrepreneur who founded Cali Rock Entertainment, and she's an, an industry-leading DJ. She's worked for people like uh, Khalifa um yo yo ll cool j rakim and uh eric b dj pzb good morning yes indeed good morning good morning and you know you have a glamorous life but you also have multiple hustles right i mean you do a lot of different things uh to keep the bank account uh on full right almost definitely always always have to in between tours in between shows all the time so like what what are some of the different multiple things that you have going um, one of the things, um, I do actually is driving, you know, when, before all of this took place, you know, I, I did some driving out there so that, uh, you know, you could be on tour for three months and then sometimes, hey, you know, there's that break in between. You gotta do what you have to do and it's, it's easy to pop in and, and, uh, do it on your own time and your own schedule. So even things like that. So v various hustles. I mean, it's like a lot of us. There's uh, kind of gig work. The gig economy has made it to where you can be uh, a DJ or or an actor yeah. and have you know and have a chance to make money um, in other ways. Anthony Brooks is joining us. Good morning, Anthony. Anthony, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? So yeah, welcome, welcome to the front page. Welcome to KJLH. So tell me about um, you know your. 25 jobs. I, I <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just to, uh, I, I drive also as well, but my, um, my main hustle is uh, I'm a health and nutrition coach, so I'm trying to get people in the best shape of their lives, uh, whether that is uh, losing weight, gaining weight, or um, just trying to feel better with their lives. Interesting. I, I think, yeah, uh, nutrition, health, nutrition coaches, trainers are another area that's really uh, big here in California. 
and not and an independent uh, professional who may or may not be covered by a lot of these programs, right? Right. And yet, and so when you say you drive, you're talking about like, uh, like a Uber, Lyft, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I drive for Lyft or ride, ride sharing. So yeah, I drive, try drive in the morning, try drive in the afternoon, catch the uh, the waves of traffic, and then I work my business in between. Right. So I mean, and I think that's pretty typical. I mean, most of the drivers I talk to have their professors or they got something else going on. Um, and so, how how are you guys surviving, um, Anthony and PZB? How is this um, COVID nineteen situation hitting you guys? Well, the driving part kind of slowed down for me, um, but most of my business is online. So actually, it's kind of been good because the people are staying home. So either they're choosing to take care of their health, and so for me, it's kind of worked out for me a little bit more people are choosing the the COVID-19 is actually woken them up to their health concerns so they're actually you know more people are reached out and want to take control of their life so it's been pretty good in that aspect of driving you know nobody's really going where as they shouldn't so that kind of slowed down but the other side kind of picked up for me and uh yeah, PZB definitely. I know it's yeah I know it's hit you yeah definitely I can actually agree on that um even on the social side um of course uh the side gigs out in the world have have come to a halt but um when it comes to my craft and social media and everything it's actually helping out you know what i'm saying because uh you know just with everything within the city and the way the world's going it's very difficult for me but i can do things online and i do it to um, help my fans stay home and stay safe is why i say we all lock in together i dj for them i just dj 24 hours for them last weekend um, as a unity experience so everybody could stay home, stay safe. And that's what I've been doing. And that's actually what's been helping more so in love also for everybody to just keep a straightforward mind during everything in this, this rough time. I mean, when you guys, um, Anthony and PZB, when you guys and, and Jamal Watkins, you can uh, jump in on this, too. When you think about what it's going to take for uh, the black community to bounce back from this or what it's going to take for us to get through it. Forget about bounce back because we don't know how long it's going to be until we get to a new normal. You know, when you talk about we we just talked to the man from the SBA, uh, you know, um, Jamal Watkins, of course, representing the NAACP and we'll have lawmakers on coming up. What do you think it's going to take for us as a black community to be able to survive COVID-19 from a financial standpoint? Well, I, I would jump in and say the NACC, we've had these conversations like our virtual town halls with BET, our faith forward conversations with churches, who we forget churches are actually businesses chaired by folks like Reverend Dr. Amos Brown and Reverend Dr. Zena Pierre. And what we're learning is that unless we get more funding in the next stimulus package, what they're calling stimulus number four or CARES Act number two, then our folks are actually going to be years, five to ten years in the hole. And when I think about folks like Anthony and, and the DJ, we know that the, the loan program under economic injuries, disaster relief, it's a loan. And so if you got to take out a loan to get through this moment and then start to pay it back, you literally are in a hole. And so what we are arguing, and I know leaders like Maxine Waters, Karen Bass, Barbara Lee, Herb Wesson are all advocating for this, that we need grant programs to cover folks who are in the gig economy, to cover folks who have churches that aren't big businesses, because otherwise we're going to be digging out of this for at least a decade. And so I would argue our next bite at the apple is right now in advocating for federal funding in this next stimulus package to actually include a cutout for small black businesses, folks in the gig economy that are not loans, but that are grants that sustain us so that when we come out of this period, we're not deeper in debt than when we started. Uh, 841 in the morning. Um, I really want to thank uh, Council President Emeritus Herb Wesson, uh, the City of Los Angeles Community Build, and the Independent Professionals Association for even allowing us to have this conversation because they are bringing this show to us today. Uh, and I think that is part of it is what do we need to do? You know, it, and I feel like Anthony and you, PZB, you you're represent a lot of people because a lot of us are putting pieces together, you know, um, to uh, use all of our different skills to be able to show up for all of the different opportunities. Um, what kind of support do you think you would need? What would be helpful for you in this situation and beyond? I want to start, Anthony. Uh, for me personally, just, uh, you know, just 
I think just sticking together, uh, you know, you're supporting each other, you know, inv- investing in us, I think, uh, so many times people really don't really you know, invest in each other. So, um, yeah, I, I think just, that's what we all need, to be honest. I don't think it's and, that complicated. Yeah, so you think we can we can dig our way out of this without uh, a lot of outside help. Um, um, PCB, what's your thought on that? What would help? Uh <laughs> A lot would help, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm, you know, as, as grand as everything is on stage, you know, this has been a hassle for myself as well. Just like everyone else, just down to, uh, you know, trying to check in with unemployment. Like, if, if there was no social media, then what? Uh, like, how am I going to get continue to get money and gain money for my company? That is the company that I run. You know what I'm saying? And then you can't go out and do gigs because everything's closed. So um, it's it's, and it's only been, what, a month or two or two months now, whatever, how long I've been locked in. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's starting to hit the toe now when you're trying to just kind of catch up, even just down to rent for my studio, what, you, you know. And then you got to go into all the paperwork with the city and everything and finding everything, making sure everything is correct, going to making sure you're on the city's website, things like that. But it's definitely a hassle, and it's it's kind of, rough to think about like how how do we move forward you know how exactly do we move forward in this like if i wasn't creative (laughs) you know and could think of different ways like what am i what are we to do here you know it's very hard to get through this process but I am trucking along. <laughs> right, and a lot of people that don't have a 9 to 5 and really can't have a 9 to 5 because they have multiple hustles like you're a DJ or whatever. It, yeah. the, the whole unemployment process I know has been very challenging and the options may not be as many. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, I don't work a 9 to 5 because for me it's like if I work a 9 to 5, you know, will I be able to head out on tour? So that's why I do all the other side things. I do graphics. I do all these different things like that. So it's like, it's almost like a, I'm hoping it's not a full restart, but, you know, it's just we're having to boil down and, and figure out what to do, like, for work and how to gain income and, and all these things because of this situation. While we stay safe, you know, we're trying to stay safe. Yeah. And and keep others safe, by the way. I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. y- 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 that's part of the thing is collective wellness. Right. So that's why we have to stay home. I it's fine for me to risk my life, but it's not fine for me to risk my life and my neighbor's life. Uh, let's let's go to Pat from Inglewood. Good morning, Pat. Morning. How are you? Good, good. What's on your mind this morning? Well, we're here solid and we're non-essential. Our salon has been closed down since March 17th. We're not allowed to go into the salon. There's no money being made. Uh, I, we've been on the phone, um, nine of us girls been on the phone every morning texting each other, trying to get the EBD, trying to get the paycheck uh, protection. Those forms are so difficult to fill out. Right. Okay, so Pat, it sounds like, I don't know if you've tried the Vermont Slauson um, Economic Development Corporation or, uh, you know, WorkSource and maybe um, look for some help. Uh, Jamal Watkins from the NAACP, what can you tell Pat? What, what I tell Pat is we are advocating that if you go to the resources that Dominique just presented, there is a, a so that, and, and this is unfortunate, that you may have to actually focus in on the unemployment insurance sector and for immediate relief because there's about a trillion dollars worth of requests and only, you know, 700 billion was made available and that money has been earmarked. So I would argue keep trying to get the resources through those loan programs, but if you have to get money right now, unemployment insurance in the state of California is, is lax or relaxed. And so you should be able to get the baseline plus about $600 more per week. And that way you can put food on the table, keep the lights on in your home, but then keep going after these loan programs. And then the second reality is the next stimulus that's coming out, if you're in the pipeline now, folks like Doc Maxine Waters, Herb Wesson, and others are fighting for carve-outs for businesses like salons and black-owned businesses like barbershops so that you can actually get the money and not be in the slow track which is what I was lifting up a bit earlier. So there's a dual reality of get unemployment insurance right away because you're technically unemployed, 
even though you have your own business, and keep going after these small business grants, if you will, so that the next stimulus that comes around, you actually are in the pipeline and can get some funding. Um, so, but what about, I mean, and, and this is uh, for DJ PZB and Anthony Brooks. I mean, you guys are, you know, you have your own company, PZB, um, Anthony, you, but you guys are also independent workers that work for others too. Can you guys, have you guys applied for unemployment? How does that work for you? Well, for me, uh, the lines are busy. Like, I, I tried, it wouldn't let me accept, it wouldn't let me do it. Then they had like separate line and both lines just took into a voicemail, an automated message and told me to call back and I haven't been able to get through. So I've tried, but there's, there's, there's been no, to, no avail so far for me. Yeah, I'm, and that's, I mean, that's been widely reported in the papers, too, just that the system is jammed. And I know they're putting more workers on, but it doesn't seem to have caught up yet. PZB, what about you? Uh, yeah, it was uh, a hassle for me, actually. It actually still is. It just boiled down even to today. But I probably spent <laughs> at least six days in a row just almost kind of giving up. And then, like, okay, just go back to it. Just trying to figure out, you know, where do you start and how to get through some of the stuff. It took me a couple of days to even get to the beginning process of it. Um, and so once I finally did that... Of course, some couple of things were, they're, they're confusing, you know. You could, would, do I select this? Do I select that? And um, I submitted it. I think I actually must have answered one of one of the questions incorrectly. So I, then I then have to backtrack and go back in and, and um, resubmit and do other things. But it's been a, it's been a process for me. It wasn't a, I popped in and, and, and did it and got a check. So like I said, I'm still... I'm still over here trying to figure it out as well in every way, <laughs> you know. Um, so I want to ask, um, you know, what is the NAACP or, or what can we as activists that listen to the show too? what can we do to look out for people who are not necessarily, you know, a small business, we can go and utilize their business. We Sure, we can follow PZB on Instagram and watch her DJ sets. But what can we do um, from a, you know, community organizing standpoint to help these um the the average worker right here in la that is um you know that's got multiple hustles and side hustles to the side hustles you know i would say that there's, there's probably three quick things that folks can do right now from the comfort of their home number one is if you're having an issue and i'm hearing anthony and the dj say this of getting through to say the unemployment insurance options or any of the funding options, reach out directly to your elected officials. So if Herb Weston is your city council member, reach out to his office, tell your story. If you have a congressperson like a Maxine Waters representing you, reach out to their offices because what we're finding is that those offices are also now filling in the gaps. And so if there's an issue that they can help unstick, that can be, you know, one part of relief. The second piece is there are programs that are out there that are hidden programs so, for example, there's a program around called the Support for Dislocated Workers, which is $100 million for dislocated workers. So if you go to websites like Department of Labor, HUD, and, and go to USDA, the, the website that has like SNAP, which is food stamps, there are a lot of programs that are not being promoted as heavily that folks can qualify for. So if you're struggling to get food on the table, there are programs for kids while schools are closed so they, they can find meals. Their, their programs for WIC, women and infant children. I don't want folks to feel like this is a government handout because rich folks right now it's money. All of these different programs are available. And, and to the point of everyone who's called in or spoken, they have made it intentionally hard for us to get these resources. It's not easy, but we want to make sure that you know that the information is out there. And if you're stuck, reach out to your elected officials. And then the last thing I would lift up from the NACC perspective, we're going to keep fighting for stimulus money from stimulus number four. And so we have forums and town halls where we're educating folks on Tuesday, for example. We'll have another town hall on Wednesday. We will have another town hall. And it's to keep the information around what's coming next. Because if there's another wave of money, you know, billions of dollars, a trillion dollars, we want to make sure that it's earmarked for you all. And so if you're advocating and fighting for that, sending emails, calling and saying, look, I'm not getting the services I need, that's the best way to make sure that in this next pass of money, we actually get the relief we need to our community. 
absolutely. And I feel like um, we we also have to just stay vocal in terms of if you can get involved with an organization, if you, you know, even if you do it virtually. Um, I have a friend, uh, Mr. Watkins, who's been volunteering for the NAACP on the phone. She's been uh, making sure voters are registered one phone call at a time uh, through your office. And, you know, it, it, it's I think it's important to find find ways uh, to also stay active um, from a community organizing standpoint during this time as well. Yeah, and Dominic, I would say visit the NAACP website backslash coronavirus. You can report discrimination, tell your story. We have frequently asked questions, a lot of the questions that folks are calling about. There's an equity re resource guide, and I get it. Folks are in crisis. We're trying to live, survive, feed our families, but we also know that the system has been rigged against us from day one. And so a part of this, as you said, is being active for those who aren't in the same boat as folks who are really trying to find resources and make phone calls, send emails, and volunteer virtually. That's how we're going to get out of this thing and get through this thing. But we're, we're in this fight for the future, but know that right now we got to get the resources to the people who need those resources directly. And, you know, we hear a lot about, uh, you know, people that work at hospitals, people that deliver groceries, people that are at grocery stores have now become frontline workers. Uh, for people like uh, you, Anthony, who, you know, you are a personal trainer, but you also drive, uh, you know, ride share. Um, that's that's a, a weird position, too, because you're a frontline worker when you're out there. But I'm, I'm imagining the work is dried up because I don't see people going around on on in cars that much, period. So that puts you in a uniquely pinched situation, right? Yeah, it definitely has um, hurt a little bit, for sure. So what would you I, I tell... I get a couple of, about $800 off that a week, and it's probably dropped down to about maybe three. Wow. Sometimes so what less. would you what would you tell, you know, lawmakers or, or people like uh, Mr. Watkins, who are part of these big community uh, organizing efforts? What would you tell them uh, to look out for workers like you? Uh, maybe some grants, some, something like that. You know, you know, yeah, grants, maybe that can help out. Really don't. I don't really know what to yeah. tell them. Just need me help. <laughs> <laughs> and, and PCB, you want to answer that same question? What would you tell, you know, decision makers about how to help um, workers like you? Uh, I mean, I can only kind of, as far as right now, kind of speak on just, you know, my end. Uh, like I said, the, the Internet is what's helping me right now. You know, if anyone, like, is, you know, having a town hall online, however, I'm available for things like that, sponsorships. Uh, you know, there's still a way to make this role where we can actually get to the community as well all together. But definitely down to things like that. This is it's something we're trying to figure out. But I would love to partner with the city of L.A. and, and do all we can where we can with anyone who would like to do so. Indeed, city, county, state, and federal. We need uh, help, I guess, and partnerships at every level. Um, Anthony Brooks and DJ PZB, thank you guys so much for being with us this morning and kind of, uh, you know, sharing your experience. Thank you. Thank you. And no problem. Everyone stay safe. Indeed, that's the top priority. And Jamal Watkins, uh, thank you for being here and uh, speak on behalf of the NAACP. Thank you. And I know that as we fight for our families, like my mother, my, my brothers, my nephews, they're all in California and they're looking in the same situation. So continue to fight, continue to ask for the resources, continue to demand what we need to get through this. 8.55 in the morning, we will continue our conversation uh, here, and we are looking for, uh, forward to talking with Congresswoman Maxine Waters when we get back. Uh, it's Radio Free 102.3 KJLH and KJLHradio.com.